Today I'll be talking about week three of Zwift's Build Me Up training plan. If you just got here, thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down here below in the bottom uh, to subscribe for more content. All right, so I completed third week of the Zwift's Build Me Up training plan. And if you haven't seen the previous two, I will link them up here somewhere, or I'll also link them at the end of the video, or also at the description in the description section below. All right, so let's take a look at how the week went. On Tuesday, I did a workout called the Ham Sandwich. I actually found this workout to be a lot of fun because there were VO2 max efforts sandwiched in between over-unders. I like the short, high intensity intervals, like 30 by 30 going full gas because 30 seconds is so short that um, I get a nice recovery in between. And so it's pretty manageable effort. And I like, I like having that intensity added to it. The next one was called Nivanta, uh, which was a two by 20 at Sweet Spot. It was a pretty simple workout with cadence changes in between, which by the way, I didn't follow because I wanted to focus on putting more power out than the cadence. Next up was the dreaded yellow unicorn. The main set included six by two minutes at 83% of FTP, followed by a one minute at 105% FTP with a very short two minute recovery in between these sets. By the way, did I, did I say that I also did it two more times? It was pretty intense. So in this workout, um, the over-unders included two minutes at upper sub-threshold or zone three and one minute at above FTP. So 205 is actually in the upper end of my FTP. And this is just the first set. So there are three sets that I had to do. And the problem that I always have with the unicorn workouts is that my heart rate always gets up to the 180s uh, very quickly. And you could see this is just the first set and my heart rate is already up to 181 beats per minute. And so I always struggle with this workout. And what I do is I actually extend the recovery. So kind of same thing that I talked about uh, last week where I had to extend the recovery on a similar unicorn workout. I think it was like red unicorn that I did last week. Uh, but in total, this was 18 minutes of work on the first set and only two minutes of recovery. And so what I did was I extended it to six to nine minutes. I believe I did nine minutes towards the end when I got to the last set because I was just so uh, toast after that. I could barely do anything more than um, what I'm doing here. But I did pretty well on the first set. It's just that, um, you know, as the sets wore on, you can actually see me dropping power. So by the time I got to the last set of the Yellow Unicorn, I was holding on to my dear life. My unders averaged around upper zone two, but I was willing to hold 200 watts for the overs. The key takeaway I think for these Unicorn workouts is to extend the recovery, which I did. Uh, since the sets were 18 minutes long, I did about a six to nine minute recovery in between those two sets. The downside is that it makes the duration of the workout longer. And so the TSS or the planned TSS for this workout was a lot higher because I was actually going over the duration that it was required. It was, I believe it was an hour and 45 minutes and I completed it in like two hours and 10 minutes. To make this workout a little more interesting, I did the Mont Ventoux route on Zwift. Uh, it was fun and entertaining, and because I kept reading the little graffiti on the bottom of uh, or on the ground, and it said 90% mental, 10% legs, uh, or the names of the pros that I was familiar with, so it always makes it enter entertaining riding on Zwift that way. The last workout I did was something called Amalgam. I'm not even going to explain how the workout went because it's pretty complicated. So I'll just show the graphics on here so that you can figure out for yourself how that workout went. So in this amalgam workout, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, most likely pronouncing it incorrectly because the names of these workouts are foreign. And so I have never heard of these words. So excuse me if I totally butcher it. 
but this is the amalgam and it's actually a pretty complicated workout like most of Zwift workouts are. Uh, it was 10 minutes, the first main set was 10 minutes at upper zone three with a low zone two recovery, which goes into 10 minutes at FTP. So I thought I was actually able to get through this workout fine, um, which I did the first set. There are two sets. So at the end of this workout, there will also be another 10 minutes at FTP, which I didn't do so well on. So spoiler alert on that. Uh, but um, I rode this off of erg mode, or I'm sorry, just to clarify, I rode this with erg mode turned off. You could see from the graph on the bottom of the screen there that the power is not as smooth as it is on erg mode. And I actually like pedaling this way. You know, there's something unnatural about uh, riding on erg mode. Whereas if you have it turned off and you can just use your shifters, you could just shift to uh, adjust your cadence so that you can meet the target. I think that's the most natural way of riding. And if you train outside, this is what you're going to do anyway, because the terrain outside is a lot more, uh, it fluctuates a little a lot more, especially here in Connecticut. So um, that was one reason that I turned off org mode, but that's another reason is that I was having these issues with Bluetooth dropouts and I do, I did purchase the Ant Plus dongle. However, it, the extension cord, the USB extension cord isn't really long enough to reach the Wahoo kicker. And so I still had some minimal dropouts, but it's not as bad as it is when it was on Bluetooth. So I found that turning off erg mode, it actually is a, it's easier or it's, I feel like the connection is better um, because maybe because there's not a whole lot of data that's being transferred um, wirelessly from the computer to the kicker. So that's just a hypothesis. I'm not sure if that is, if that is to be true, but I felt like writing off erg mode, I did have, um, I didn't have as many, or I didn't have any dropouts. Uh, as you know, I do use Training Peaks to log all my workouts. One of the many things that I like about Training Peaks is its ability for, uh, for me to log metrics such as sleep, fatigue, overall feelings. And the reason why I like this is that it forces me to pay attention to my body. Now, I'm not sure if I'll ever go back to the data that I log on, uh, that I log on Training Peaks in the future because Training Peaks, as you guys know, if you have one, it is fairly data intensive already. But the idea that I am constantly listening to my body and how my body feels during, or how my body responds to training, I think is a smart way to train. Zwift, Trainer Road, Suffer Fast, Exert, whatever platform you use to do your trainings in, they're great, but they're not perfect. And I think, as athletes, we need to be better at listening to our bodies and knowing when to back off. I am a huge proponent of preventing in injuries and burnout because both can really sidetrack you from training. With that being said, you don't need to have a Training Peaks account to log these types of valuable information. You can keep a training journal, uh, write it down on a training journal, log it that way, or if you prefer to do a digital way, you can log it on your phone. Um, whatever method you use to track these metrics will get you one step closer to becoming a healthier and smart athlete. Thanks everyone for tuning in to today's video. Continue to follow me along as I continue and progress through this Zwift Build Me Up training plan week by week. This week, uh, I am doing an active recovery week and so I will not be posting a video on that. All right, guys, I will see you guys next week and don't forget to enjoy the ride. Bye-bye.